Hey, I'm Rob Witcher from Destination Certification, and I'm here to help you pass the CISSP exam. We're going to go through a review of the major topics related to cryptanalysis in Domain 3 to understand how they interrelate and to guide your studies. This is the eighth of nine videos for Domain 3. I've included links to the other mind map videos in the description below. These mind maps are one part of our complete CISSP masterclass. In the last two videos, we talked about all the wondrous things that we can do with cryptography. Now let's talk about how we can break it. Cryptanalysis is the art and the science of understanding how crypto systems work so we can find ways to defeat them or strengthen them if you want to have less fun. Cryptanalysis is the process of decoding secrets and gaining access to encrypted messages and even forging new messages. There are two major types of cryptanalysis, cryptoanalytic attacks and cryptographic attacks. The primary goal of cryptoanalytic attacks is to deduce the key, find the crypto variable, the key that can be used to decrypt the ciphertext. Remember that. The primary goal of cryptoanalytic attacks I'm about to walk through is to deduce the key. A brute force attack is the simplest type of attack. Try every possible key until you find the right one. Simple, but totally ineffective for algorithms that use longer keys. Recall the key space, the total number of possible keys, doubles every time the key length is increased by a single bit. So the key space grows exponentially. This becomes an insurmountable problem very quickly. For algorithms that use 128-bit or especially 256-bit keys, there is no system in existence now or into the reasonably foreseeable future that could brute force keys of that length. So moving on to the next type of attack, ciphertext only attacks. This means the cryptoanalyst, the attacker, only has ciphertext to work with to, to try and deduce the key. Accordingly, ciphertext only attacks are very difficult. Known plain text attacks means the attacker has access to both the ciphertext and the associated plain text. The attacker knows the plain text. What are we doing here? Recall the primary goal of cryptoanalytic attacks is to deduce the key. The attacker is using the plaintext and the associated ciphertext to try and deduce the encryption key used. Once the attacker has the key, they can decrypt all the other messages and even forge messages. The next two types of attacks have the word chosen in them. Chosen means the attacker has access to the machine or algorithm, which is being used to perform the encryption and decryption. In a chosen plaintext attack, the attacker is choosing what plaintext to feed into the machine or algorithm and then looking at the result in ciphertext to try and deduce the key. A chosen ciphertext is the same idea, but in the other direction. The attacker is choosing what ciphertext to feed in to the machine or algorithm, and then looking at the result in plaintext to try and deduce, you guessed it, the key. Linear and differential analysis simply means the attacker is using complicated math to try and deduce the key. Factoring attacks. There is only one asymmetric algorithm that you need to know about that uses factoring as the hard math problem. And that algorithm is, of course, RSA. So if you see the factoring attack, think RSA. Or if you want to attack RSA, think the factoring attack. Moving on, let's now talk about cryptographic attacks. Cryptographic attacks are not solely focused on deducing the key. Some are and some aren't. Given that very informative introduction to cryptographic attacks, let's now talk about them. Man in the middle attacks are where the attacker places themselves in the middle of a conversation. This allows the attacker to eavesdrop on the communications being sent back and forth and possibly alter the communication. A replay attack is a form of man in the middle attack. The attacker eavesdrop and intercepts data being sent, such as intercepting a user's hashed password being sent to the server to authenticate the user. In a replay attack, the attacker cannot decipher the data they have intercepted but they can replay it, resend it later to their... For example, the attacker could resend the hash of a user's password later on, masquerading as the user to gain unauthorized access. And a pass the hash attack is a type of replay attack. Specifically, what I just used as the example for replay, where the attacker captures a hashed password and then resends the password later to authenticate as a user. So remember, a pass the hash attack is a type of replay attack and a replay attack is a type of man in the middle attack. When a crypto system is encrypting and decrypting data, temporary files are often used to temporarily store 
plain text, ciphertext, and encryption keys. These temporary files may not be sufficiently secured, and thus, in a temporary file attack, the attacker gains access to sensitive plain text or encryption keys by accessing these temporary files. Implementation attacks target weaknesses in how an algorithm, crypto system, protocol, or application has been implemented. A perfect example that you should remember for the exam is WEP, Wired Equivalency Protocol, which implements the RC4 encryption algorithm to secure wireless traffic. WEP should never be used because it's a horribly broken and insecure protocol. And yet, the RC4 encryption algorithm is excellent. The problem is that WEP does a terrible job of implementing RC4. The initialization vectors are too short, and a portion of the IV is static, among many other issues. Side channel attacks are at any type of an attack where sensitive information is gathered by carefully monitoring a system that is performing some cryptographic tasks from the side. Power side channel attacks measure how much power is, is consumed by certain calculations. Timing attacks measure how long certain operations take. And in side channel radiation emission attacks, the electromagnetic waves that are emanated by a system are closely monitored. Dictionary attacks are a form of brute force attack used to find encryption keys or a user's password. Rather than trying every possible combination in some sequential order, dictionary attacks try the most likely combinations first. Thus, dictionary attacks can be much more efficient and faster method than just simple brute force attack. For example, if you want to figure out a user's password, the best password to try first is the most common password in the world, password or 123456. There are dictionaries, giant data sets of the most common passwords in the world that can be used for dictionary attacks. Rainbow tables are an extension of password dictionaries. Here's the idea. A user's password should never be stored in plain text in a password database. Instead, it is much more secure to store the hash value of a user's password. This poses a problem for attackers. If they steal a password database, they will just have a bunch of hashed passwords. And of course, hashing is one way. You cannot take a hash value of a password and go backwards to determine the password. But what you could do is hash the password 123456 and then compare the hash value you just generated to a hash value of a user's password. If the hash values match, then boom, you know the user's password is 123456. So devious attackers have taken these giant dictionaries of the most common passwords in the world, and then for each password, they have pre-computed the hash value. This is essentially a rainbow table, a giant database of the most common passwords and their associated hash values. You can no doubt see how rainbow tables would help an attacker. How do we defeat rainbow tables? Salt and pepper. I actually created a video on salt and pepper, which I've linked to in the description below. The attacks exploit the mathematics behind the birthday paradox in probability theory. You should associate birthday attacks with finding collisions in hashing functions. And the final truly excellent way of attacking a crypto system is by targeting the weakest link in any system, people. Often the easiest way to figure out some super secure key is to just bribe someone. Thus, the purchase keys key attack. Or, if the carrot approach doesn't work, move on to the stick and torture someone. Uh, this is rubber hose cryptanalysis. You torture someone. And on that super cheery note, we have now reached the end of our review of cryptography. We still have one more video in Domain 3, which is focused on physical security. If you haven't happened upon them yet, we have a free series of practice question videos here on our YouTube channel. By going through example questions, we teach you how to best read a question, pick out the keywords, understand what the question is asking you, and thus be able to find the best answer to each question. Link to our free practice question videos is in the description below. Thank you.